Today, several buildings in Washington, D.C. were shut down and several were evacuated after a man in a pickup truck claimed to have an explosive device that would be triggered by decimals. Although it is believed he meant decibels, the threat was taken seriously. A standoff ensued. And as of right now, the man has surrendered. It's all over and it appears to be safe. Now, the man also broadcast a statement on Facebook. Facebook deleted his profile. They deleted the live stream. And I have to be honest, I'm, I, I, I was also reluctant to even show the article which depicts his face because we don't like giving these people attention. But in his stream, he said, the revolution starts today, Joe Biden. And he said, I'm one of five. Now, we don't know what he meant by oh, I'm one of five. Some people think he's saying that there's more than just him in D.C., though I don't think that's true. He may have been referring to his family. Now, it is true that in this country, we are so divided that things seem to be getting more and more chaotic and that I don't know if that's unique to today because we did see the weather underground in the 70s. We did see the Vietnam protests. There was extremism back then as well. We also had what happened at Kent State to say that we are equal to on par or worse than it's, it's hard to know for sure. But new polling by the People's Pundit shows that it's bipartisan. Both sides think we are headed towards another civil war to a certain degree that it's, well, I should say it's considered to be more likely than not. And that to me is particularly worrying, but not surprising because I've talked about it quite a bit. When you take a look at any polling, you can see the stark ideological divide. You can see that Democrats will just support Biden no matter what. Republicans oppose him no matter what. And it's really frustrating. Independent voters, of course, lean away from the support. They lean towards disapproval of Joe Biden and the economy. But I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, Joe Biden will say something. And immediately I say I see conservatives just saying it was bad. Whatever he's saying is bad. Whatever, he, whatever he's doing is bad. And I'm like, come on. Like, look, I get it. The president is doing a terrible job, in my opinion, but not every single thing he says is wrong. Of course, not every single person on the right, but certainly the tribalism runs deep. As much as I don't like Joe Biden or Kamala Harris, and I think the administration is hiding and, and basically struggling to maintain any kind of professionalism amid this crisis, I still think there are some things we can give them credit for and try to encourage better behavior. But you've also got people ragging on CNN because their reporters are on the ground just trying to find that reason. Now, to me, I just see this and I'm like, people want some kind of conflict. And I hope we don't go there. I don't want anything like that to happen. Life is comfortable. At least it was more comfortable before, I suppose, with the pandemic and the lockdown, things seem to be getting worse. But you do not want to see the things that I and, and many others have seen in other parts of the, of, of the world. And don't take it from me. I'm sure there are many veterans who can tell you stories substantially worse than the stories I could tell you. Yeah, I covered civil conflict and unrest and traveled to some third world countries. I didn't see actual, you know, theater of war in like Syria or anything like that. You know, the stories I hear about that are substantially worse. So as much as I don't want these things to happen, it seems like these things keep happening. And I always tell everybody that the true, the true way out of this, it's peaceful, persuasive and resourceful. It is nonviolent civil disobedience. You need to understand fourth and fifth generational warfare. What this man did is one of the most detrimental things to any successful American society, no matter what side you are on. Now, it's easy. The left will just be like, of course, he's a he's a Trump supporting wingnut. Easy for them to condemn. And obviously, the right condemns it as well. But for this guy to claim to be a Trump supporter, something like that, all this does is make everything worse. Now, I understand it's an uphill battle. The mainstream media is lopsided in favor of the left, but this stuff is not is not not good. You take a look at the polling and it seems to back up that we're heading down dark paths or, or a dark path. But let's read the news before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com and become a member to get access to the exclusive TimCast members only uh, TimCast IRL member segments um, on TimCast.com, as well as an ad free experience on the website. You will also be helping to support our fierce and independent journalists. But don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, share this with your friends. Let's read the news. And, and I'll also stress to look, it's breaking news. We have to talk about this. YouTube punishes channels for doing this, which is why we set up TimCast.com. It's very likely that this video will be demonetized, deranked, and kicked to the gutter. 
But uh, we'll start with the raw story, actually, so you can get some context as to what this guy was saying. And and and, I will, and then I will show the AP breaking down. He did surrender, so no need to worry for, for now. We'll see how things play out. From raw story, and also, which is a left outlet. The revolution starts today, Joe Biden. I'm one of five in video, drive, uh, in, in video driving to the U.S. Capitol. Floyd Ray Roseberry appears to be the suspect sitting in his pickup truck outside the Library of Congress in D.C., with an alleged explosive device, he posted several videos of his drive to the building Thursday on social media. In his videos, he began talking about how his health insurance wouldn't pay for him for anything anymore. He said he'd been getting injections in his knees to help him walk. When he went to the doctor, he said that the insurance didn't cover him. He went on to say that his wife had skin cancer, but that the insurance wouldn't cover it either because they considered it cosmetic. He said that his wife had had to have her nose practically removed. I cleared my conscience with God, he said, noting that he told his wife he'd be home on Sunday, whichever home it is. He wanted to say he had no fear. He went on to claim he is one of five, but didn't clarify what that meant. I'm not going to read quotes from this guy. You get the idea. The AP reports man surrenders after claiming to have bomb near Capitol. The man who claimed of a bomb in a pickup truck near the U.S. Capitol has surrendered to law enforcement ending an hours-long standoff on Thursday. The man identified by law enforcement officials as Floyd Ray Roseberry, 49 of North Carolina, crawled out of his vehicle and was being taken into custody shortly before 2.30 p.m. He had pulled up outside the library earlier in the day and told police he had a bomb in his truck. An officer saw what appeared to be a detonator in the man's hand. The man had been negotiating with police during a standoff that lasted around five hours. They say this is a breaking news update. So by the time you watch this, there's probably much, much more information. I, I pushed the production of this one really, really close to, to, to launch time um, just to try and make sure we had the most up to date information because this is important. The AP reported that a man sitting in a black pickup truck parked on the sidewalk outside the Library of Congress and told police he had a bomb. He had a bomb. Officials evacuated a number of buildings around the Capitol and sent snipers to the area after officers saw a man holding what looked like a detonator inside the pickup truck, which had no license plates. They go on to mention the name of the man, which we know. Police negotiators were communicating with Roseberry as he wrote notes and showed, showed them to authorities from inside the truck. According to two people in the third person also briefed on the matter, all of whom spoke on condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to publicly discuss the matter. Authorities were trying to determine whether it was an operable bomb, the official said. Police gave no immediate details on his motive or any demands. My negotiators are hard at work trying to have a peaceful resolution to the incident, U.S. Capitol Police Chief J. Thomas Manger said. We're trying to get as much information as we can to find a way to peacefully resolve this. So again, we know that it did end in a peaceful resolution. The Capitol building was put in lockdown, the White House, the Library of Congress. And I believe that we also saw uh, the Supreme Court. The, uh, so, so, we have, we, so again, this is a developing story, hard to track all the different sources, but the Supreme Court was evacuated and the House office building was also evacuated. Now we have this from Facebook. They removed the live stream by the man claiming to, to, to have the bomb, a uh, more important context. And I think uh, what I'm ultimately going to get into here, because I, 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 I struggle with showing this guy, I struggle with reading what he had to say or why he was doing it, because I don't want to give these people attention. So to the extent that I read that story, for, you know, eight whatever minutes. Okay, well, let's talk about what's happening in this country and the partisan nature of, of, of what this is. And first, I will say of this man, he is, he is said to have, uh, I believe one report said he was bipolar. I am not going to take this to say, uh, you know, any one group is responsible. This is a lone individual who is clearly unwell, who has surrendered, and hopefully this resolves things. But as we saw with the raw story, one of the things they highlight was his medical insurance. Jen Dees tweeted, Capital Bomb Suspect talks about how health insurance wouldn't pay for anything anymore. He said he'd been getting injections in his knees to help him walk. The insurance didn't cover him and his wife had skin cancer, but insurance wouldn't cover it. Kevin Gastola, a journalist, says blowback against political elites like Biden, Clyburn and Pelosi, who have sold Americans to health insurance corporations for exploitation. Certainly, many on the left are now talking about how this is an example of the establishment elites selling out the little guy. Now, over on the right, and, th and this trend isn't necessarily indicative of ever what everyone on the right is saying, you have many people saying false flag. 
There are many people acting like this individual was was somehow involved with an operation to frame Trump supporters or something like that. As you can see, MAGA terrorists is currently trending on Twitter. I don't know if any of that's true. Of course not. I can't say it is or it isn't, but I typically lean towards provide me evidence or I'm just not going to entertain it at all and will operate under the assumption at the very least that it's not true. But the reason I highlight these things is to show you the different perspectives coming from different individuals. You've got the left saying, you know, Trump people are terrorists. You've got some leftists, as I've shown you, saying that this is this is about health care and the establishment selling out the working class. And then you've got some people saying that it's a false flag. And then, of course, you have the pushback saying y'all are making up crazy nonsense. Whatever whatever this is, I can say that things have been getting worse I just easiest way to put it, conflict seems to be escalating. And as I mentioned before, you know, we've seen in the 70s that things were really, really bad. You know, we, we had uh, the Vietnam protests with the weather underground. So so maybe it's not as bad as it was then. Some people, uh, older people probably say, oh, it was worth that worse then because of what the weather underground was doing. I mean, they were they were doing shock and awe campaigns and uh, message bombings, they called it, meaning they weren't targeting people uh, for the most part. They were just trying to send a message in the, in the press, which is still rather nightmarish. But, you know, in these in these conversations, many still will concede the divide today is rather extreme and, and much more than it was back then. There was still some national cohesion. We don't have that so much anymore. Rich Barris, the People's Pundit, conducted a poll and he posted this to his locals page. The cross tabs for the Civil War question. Well, let's pull it up. In this poll, likelihood of a second civil war by party detail, asking how likely is it the United States of America is headed for another civil war or widespread political violence that leads to significant division? Base, very likely, 443, somewhat likely, 762, somewhat unlikely, 386, very unlikely, 203, and unsure, no opinion was 216. The sample size was 2010. My friends, 2000 is a large sample size. That's big. You know, when they do polls, not to say that all polls are perfect, and there's a lot of math that goes into it. The idea is they ask a certain number of people that represent the public at large. They get a sample size and then extrapolate. Here's what we can see. The total amount of individuals who believe that a second civil war is likely 22%. A fifth of this country believe us a second civil war is likely. The percentage of people who believe a second civil war is somewhat likely, 37.9, just about a third of this country. <laughs> that means we're looking at 59.9% of this country believing it is at least to some degree likely there is a second civil war coming. Almost 60% of those that think it's unlikely, it's 19.2, very unlikely, 10.1, and unsure, 10.7. The unsure is the one that really gets me, because that basically, like, like, come on. You go to someone and say, what do you think the likelihood that aliens are going to land on the planet? They're going to be like, none, zero, 1.01. People are pretty sure of a thing that won't happen. So when you ask someone, do they think there'll be a second civil war, and 10.7% say, you know, I'm not entirely sure, they're saying, maybe, Maybe. Now, when you look by party, it gets interesting. 20.2% of Democrats think it is very likely. 20.1% of independents, very likely. Something else, some other party. 14.4% and Republicans, even more so, at 26.9%. But my friends, it is bipartisan. As the People's Pundit said, it is bipartisan. It is nearly identical numbers. It's more, uh, more Republicans believe that they're, we are heading towards a second civil war than Democrats, but Democrats are not far behind. 35.6 believe it's somewhat likely. That's Democrat voters. 43.8% of people who don't identify as Democrat, Republican, or independent believe it's likely. 38.8% of independents believe it is likely. That is, so what, what, we also have 58.9% of independent voters saying it is somewhat it, it is to some degree likely there will be a second civil war. These are the things I think people need to pay attention to. You know, cuz I've been saying it that I think it's the direction we're headed in unless something changes. 
And the, I, I got to be honest, the only thing I saw that I think actually might have a substantial change to the system is Joe Biden's failure in Afghanistan, because there is now bipartisan condemnation of the presidential administration, and they're, they're effectively in hiding. But just because people don't like the establishment doesn't mean they will like each other. Right now, I look at many of these, these leftists, and they're just, they're tribalist. I, and I mean it leftist. I, I, I often clarify when I say Democrat or leftist. No, they're still tribalist. I get leftists on, on Twitter, not Democrats, who just lie all day about me and about the things I've said because they just want to hate. So this, the Democrats are different. The Democratic establishment goes after me in, in, in somewhat illegitimate means, meaning they'll write things out of context, which is not too dissimilar. But they'll try and frame it as like a more professional, like, well, actually, he's done these things. So you make up your mind and it's all just BS, basically. But it's irrelevant. One of the things that they've often tried smearing me over is that I've routinely said uh, hundreds of times that I think we are headed in the direction of civil war. What will that look like? I don't entirely know. It could be states breaking away. It could be regions breaking away. It could be a peaceful dissolution. It could be sporadic street violence and anarcho tyranny. I honestly don't know. We are in fourth and fifth generational warfare, meaning propaganda owns all. And that's why I keep saying, you know, I'm just I get so annoyed by these people who, 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 who talk about f- physical action or violence, be it left or right, because I'm like, you guys have no idea what you're doing. Probably what rallied more people against Black Lives Matter than anything else was the violence from those people. So when the Black Lives Matter protesters go out and the Antifa protesters go out smashing things, they lose support. It was painful for their cause, but they don't care to listen. It's amazing. Net support for Black Lives Matter is in the gutter. It's well below where it was over a year and a half ago peaking around George, the George Floyd incident, the riots destroyed all of the public goodwill. Don't be stupid. We are not in the era of violence. That's long, long ago. It is over. We are in the era of propaganda and information warfare. It used to be that you used people used violence because they needed to gain control of something. They wanted to control a system, a government, a pop, you know, a population, resources, And so what would they do? They would come in and force people. They would take it. Now, that doesn't work. It breeds resistance groups. I mean, that was always the case, especially with any kind of subjugation. It was very difficult to pull off without their forming resistance. Now they use propaganda and you get the population to go along with you, which is why it's so important to be peaceful, persuasive and resourceful to explain to people honestly and with integrity. Now, I get it. Many of these people uh, on the left lie, cheat, and steal. They want communism. They want socialism. They'll call it anarchy, but they really want some kind of communism. And they'll lie to get it. You can't, you can't play that game. There's no ends. They believe the ends justify the means, but they're wrong. That's why they're despots, despots and tyrants, petty tyrants. That's why they're authoritarians. Because using coercion, manipulation, and physical force is authoritarian. And that's not what we are fighting for. Figuratively, I should, or I should say politically fighting. What we want is to be left alone. Perhaps the non-aggression principle. Interestingly, not all left libertarians actually subscribe to the belief that you shouldn't aggress against someone, which is something I find very strange. But this is where we're at right now. I want to show you the oblivious nature of the establishment. Sam Harris. You know, Never listened to Sam Harris a whole lot. I've heard some of his stuff, but I think he is, I, I, I am not a fan. We'll put it that way. I'll try and keep things uh, um, a bit more tepid than I probably would like to. No, Sam, Sam is, is, is a terrible political pundit, in my opinion. He should not be engaging in this political rhetoric because he only exposes that he has no idea what's happening in this country. But I think it's important to highlight because Sam represents what a lot of Democrats believe, and he has a popular podcast. Sam Harris tweets, Biden achieves near Trumpian negligence here. But unlike Trump, those reputation, uh, unlike Trump, whose reputation among his fans was magically shielded from earthly damage, Biden can't get away with being a callous moron in an emergency. And he shouldn't. This is all just sickening. I'll tell you the problem with this tweet. First of all, he's 
correct in criticizing Biden. The problem is Trump supporters regularly criticized Trump. It's, 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 not, it's not even a question. I, I tell the story all the time. I get into a cab and the guy tells me he voted for Trump, but he wished Trump would just shut up. But Trump did have his zealots, the people who believe Trump could do no wrong, no matter what he said. They existed, but they're the exception, not the rule. Now, I, as someone who voted for Trump in the last election, can easily point out bad things Trump did. Missile strikes in Syria, commando raids, of course, criticizing him when he deserves to be criticized. But Sam Harris is acting like that doesn't exist. And this is important. Biden achieves near Trumpian negligence. His reputation was, among his fans was magically shielded, but not high. I'll criticize Joe Biden. Yes, of course. And I criticized Trump and voted for the guy, too. You're not special. You see, Sam represents the, the ignorance of these people who would believe the economy is good right now and vote Democrat. And that's people like Sam Harris. And they are the blind leading the blind. There are very serious problems in this country. But so long as Sam Harris pushes these lies because he doesn't do any inch of research, any bit, you get high profile individuals who don't know what they're talking about, leading other people into hate. Many zealots supported Trump. No matter what he said and did, they would never see him as doing anything wrong. And I already complained about tribalists on the right condemning literally every single thing that Donald Trump will say. And I see it with Jen Psaki as well. It's like, look, there's a lot of things to criticize her over. But it's so strange to me when they try and nitpick everything. When, when, when we had CNN's reporter, Clarissa Ward, on the ground in Afghanistan saying, she made a comment about what the Taliban had been saying, everybody took out one of the lines. I saw many conservatives do this. She said that they're chanting death to America, but they also seem friendly. It's bizarre. And I saw the quote posted over and over again by conservatives with conservatives, but they cut out the part where she said it's bizarre. Clearly, her point was that being friendly did not make sense considering they were chanting such violent things. My personal opinion it was obvious and perhaps poorly worded on Clarissa Ward's part, but I respect the fact that she's on the ground as a woman re- filming the Taliban. I think that's great. I'm glad CNN's doing it. And that's what we should encourage. CNN, do more of that. We don't like you for your unhinged nonsense over Trump, but I will absolutely praise Clarissa Ward's coverage on the ground in Afghanistan. Why? The Biden administration is basically AWOL right now. If y'all can't recognize that sometimes people you don't like do good things, we are doomed. And it's about time people wake up and start saying things like, It is good that Biden withdrew withdrew our force from Afghanistan, but he did it wrong. Criticize him heavily for that. It is good that Joe Biden is speaking to the press. Thank you. But his administration is basically nowhere to be found. Where's where's Kamala? Jen Psaki on vacation. Chief of staff won't give interviews to the press and Biden's lying. We want to encourage the good things. Okay, we want to discourage the bad things. And that means you may lean in a certain direction, but we cannot just say no matter what Biden is always bad. I mean, he's mostly bad a lot of the times, and it's very easy to see. Trump had his bad moments, and I think for a lot of reasons he was bad. But people just want to hate. Now, to to address Sam Harris acting like the, the noble Biden supporters will criticize him while the Trump supporters would never criticize Trump. You just got to Google search culture war. And what do you see? How the right wing is using, using Biden's Afghanistan withdrawal to start a new culture war from Salon. Right wing media already bored with bashing Biden over Afghanistan. Return to the culture war. They're, of course, acting like it is the Republicans. Pounce because people just want to hate. People need to wake up. Here's what I think. Donald Trump, insurgent candidate, Bernie Sanders, insurgent candidate, both with their merits. Bernie Sanders caved to the establishment and sold out, changed his positions and embraced embraced wokeness. Donald Trump, insurgent candidate, made it in. I didn't vote for, for, for Trump. I didn't vote for anybody, to be completely honest, even though I was like very fervently pro Bernie at the time. I didn't vote for Trump. 2020, I did. Because I looked at what the establishment was. We had Donald Trump storming the gates of the Republican establishment and, and, and negotiating withdrawal from Afghanistan. I'm happy about that. I'm sad to see what's happening. I think it could have been done better. I think Biden screwed this up. But I still think in the end, for all of the problems, Joe Biden was right to withdraw. But 
He did it in such a way that I'm really worried about the Americans that are left remaining. And I think they royally screwed this one up. And now we're going to face the negative consequences as a nation. But I will not just say everything he says is wrong. People coming out saying his speech was terrible. Oh, it was awful. I'm like, he made several good points. I'm glad he sent them as a president vindicating so many anti-war left and right wing individuals, many conservatives who have been complaining about Afghanistan for a long time, waking up to the problems. Of course, the neocons wanted it. You can't just sit here and blame the other side and act like everyone is perfect. Now, I'm not trying to say it's both sides do it. It's, a, it's equal. It's not equal. It is not equal. As I stated, you had many moderates and conservatives criticizing Trump and recognizing this. You have many Democrats refusing to acknowledge Joe Biden, but you do get people like Sam Harris acknowledging it. The problem is he then acts like Trump supporters never did. I'll acknowledge Sam Harris doing that. Will he not acknowledge the criticism that that prominent Trump supporters gave Trump? I mean, Mike Cernovich criticized Trump frequently and people got mad at him for it, but he was being honest with you. We need to we need to think about the reality here. You get all these articles, right? You get this these, this polling that is it's so obvious we are we are I don't know, man, in trouble. Joe Biden job approval among Democrats, 86 percent. There's no reality among those people. He can do no wrong. Then you have among Republicans, 94 percent disapproval. I can understand the disapproval. I really, really can. I do not approve personally of Joe Biden's job as president, and I am not a Republican, nor will I be. I despise the Republican Party. There's a few people in the Republican Party that run as Republicans that I can respect, and there's some fighters I can respect for their spirit, though I disagree. Always been a big fan of the Paul family because they're very libertarian and want to respect other people's rights, and they don't like the Federal Reserve. I don't either. I can respect that. The Republican Party, just at 94% says Joe Biden is bad. I suppose you're allowed to. Or I'm sorry, they disapprove of his job. But this makes sense. What, what would they have to be excited about? I mean, Joe Biden has been in, it's, it's been now just, a, what, seven months. The economy is awful. We've got an Afghanistan crisis, rising oil prices, shutting down Keystone, giving the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. There is everything to, to, to disapprove of him over. What do people have to approve of? We get one thing, American Rescue Plan. That's the only thing that civics actually displays. Now, independent voters, typically where I, where I, where I fall. And it makes sense. 57% of independent voters disapprove, 32% approve. And you know what? If I was to apply on a scale of like one to 10, my disapproval, it'd probably be a six out of 10. No, I'm sorry. It'd be a seven or an eight out of 10. But that means you still get a two or three in terms of things Biden can be praised for. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch, you know, but the, the speech he gave had problems. I'd give it a C plus. I, I, I heard from conservatives like, it was the worst speech. Oh, I can't believe it. And I'm like, really? You know, when he said we shouldn't be fighting a war, the Afghans won't fight themselves. I'm like, he's right. When I'm not, I'm not going to pass this off to the next president. I'm going to move forward with this. He's right. It was the right thing to say and do. When he says I inherited it from Trump. Yeah, OK, come on. You campaigned for that job. You don't get to pass it off to Trump. But people are like, he's blaming the Afghans. I'm like, he is. Yeah. And it's not entirely the fault of the Afghan security forces. Biden botched the withdrawal. No joke. No, hands down. Mark Milley might retire now. You take a look. I, I don't want to rehash all the Afghanistan stuff. The point is, what I'm trying to bring up is the divide in this country. Something needs to change. Democrats right now, 68% believe the country is going in the right direction. Why? Simply because Joe Biden was inaugurated. Look at the charts. That's the only thing that matters to people. Is that not insane? I mean, you guys recognize the insanity of that, right? You look at Republicans. Now, this one's interesting. Among Republicans, it's not, uh, it, it, they believe 93% were in the wrong direction, but it's not due to Joe Biden being inaugurated. It's due to election day. Up until election day, Republicans were believing that we were heading in the right direction. And then once Joe Biden got elected, it flipped. So it's different. It's not based on the inauguration. It's based on the election. But come on. Is it, I suppose I get it, right? 
you're like what Trump, you know, what, what Joe Biden would bring about and what he wants to do is the wrong direction for this country. That absolutely makes sense that I, I get that. OK, and I, and I get that to a certain degree with Democrats as well. Independence, however, don't track alongside either. The election of the president had very little to do with uh, whether or not they felt good or bad about the, uh, you know, the right or wrong direction in the country. Many independent voters did feel that after the election, we were heading in, uh, we, we, we were not heading in the right direction. More became unsure, but didn't say wrong direction. I think that's important. Independent voters across the board have always believed we are going in the wrong direction. I think that applies to me today. I think it applies probably a lot of you. And I think a lot of you can recognize that the, the, the inherent tribalism, the overt tribalism. We've got to be honest and we've got to be, I don't know what the right word is. We, 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 we don't want to compromise our values, especially to evil ideas like critical race applied principles. But we do have to at least at least hold ourselves to certain standards and principles. I'm not going to pretend to be perfect. Not at all. I think I'm wrong a lot. And, and, and there's some certain ethical conundrums that I can't rectify within my own personal beliefs because we are just humans. We're not perfect. We're not computers with logic gateways in that sense. Sometimes we have multiple ideas that seem not to make sense. Morality is hard. You know, I talked about vaccine mandates uh, for, uh, for workplaces and that I'm, I think it's fine if a company wants to do it. People got mad. I'm like, if, if, I'm thinking small business, though. I'm not thinking massive multinational corporation or I'm thinking like, a small handful of employees. And, but therein lies the bigger question. Do you support vaccine mandates for the workplace? Well, it's not so simple, is it? There's a bunch of different factors. And then some people say, what about requiring other medications like birth control? And it's like, well, now we're getting into personal moral questions about values. And those are hard to quantify. I'm not going to pretend to have the answers. In fact, that's the antithesis of what I try to do here. I don't have all the answers. I can read a lot of this stuff. I can ask a lot of interesting questions, and I can point out things that may be probabilistic based on this information. But ultimately, I want you to decide. And right now, I think we need people to wake up to the nuance. Here's the reality. People on the right have a tendency towards respecting the nuance, and people on the left don't, which was my point with Sam Harris. I, I can't stand these stories, man. The story, the standoff, whatever, but I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.